Hello everyone. Today I've got a book to talk about that once again just has to go on my list of the best horror books of 2023. Last year I did a top 10 list but this year it's going to be much bigger. A phenomenal year in horror. The year is not even done and I thought I was done with that best of list <clears throat> but after reading this book I cannot stop talking about it. And really, it's one that you simply have to read. If I ended the video right there, that's all I would have to say. This is like a must read for horror fans. <laughs> uh, and as always, I want to remind you that I also have horror books for sale. And if you want to read any of the books you see on your screen, there is a link where you can do so in the description. And don't forget to pick up your Read More Horror t-shirt. There is a link in the description for that as well many sizes and colors available check it out all right let's get started all right so the book i'm going to be talking about just came out about a week ago and that is called the reformatory by tannin Arif du and this is one of the best horror books of the year <clears throat> she has managed to give us a book that encompasses so many things so many issues and she does so in such a way that it, it just leaves you emotionally uh, tired I guess you can say by the time you finish reading the book and that's a good thing because her prose just oozes emotion uh, those feelings jump from the page right into your emotional center <laughs> and you will feel all the fear you will feel the rage you will feel the uh even the hope because this book does have some of that as well as you're reading basically this is set in a fictional town called gracetown but in a very real state called florida no offense to my florida peeps but i don't know why whenever anybody includes Florida you, you just know it's going to not end well <laughs> you see though I see the word Florida in a title or, or in a book and I'm like yep this is going to get uh, very bad very quickly no, no offense if you live there of course but this is in, a, in that fictional town called Gracetown and it's set in uh, around 1950 but Gracetown is an old school racist town. This is a town that rejects all of the small but steady strides that black people had made in America at that time. Uh, black people still have their side of town. If they dare to go on the other side of town, the main part of town, uh, they can be harassed. They can be picked up for vagrancy just because they happen to want to go for a walk uh, and other horrific things can happen to them just because of course they are black they are separate uh, but definitely not equal not even that little bit of racism gets in there you know separate but equal is still a racist thing uh, but they don't even get that they are just separate and treated as subpar human beings based on the color of their skin <clears throat> and um, and the story is about a 12 year old black boy named Robbie, little black kid, and his sister Gloria, who's 16 years old. And uh, something happens one day with a white kid. He pushes Robbie while he's trying to make advances on Gloria. Robbie, even though he knows better, even though he knows he should never ever talk back or show any anger toward the white man uh, he gets upset and he kicks this kid in the leg that's all he just kicks him nothing major nothing damaging nothing long term but because of the fact that he's black and this kid is white he gets a 12 year old Robbie gets sent to jail he stands in front of a judge the judge sentences him to six months at this boys reformatory they call it a school but it's a prison for boys is basically what it is and everybody everybody knows that this place is 
is an evil place that bad things happen there kids go in and they never come out uh, and if they do come out they come out changed almost like they've been through a war with that thousand yard stare in their eyes and everybody knows it but nobody wants to shut it down because it makes a huge amount of money for the right people in that county where Gracetown happens to be located so they all kind of ignore it because these kids they're criminals in their eyes they've done something wrong whatever happens to them they deserve it uh, that's the attitude this whole town seems to have especially since the majority of the boys that go there are of a certain color so he gets sent to this place and we're going to find out very quickly that the uh, evil that people think it is is actually true most of that evil is because of the the human characters that run the institution and more on that later but Robbie will inside experience some of the things that he and others have heard about this place they are uh, beaten they are tortured they are given punishments far beyond whatever infraction these people imagine they've done and uh, it changes them uh, these boys and in the meantime Gloria his sister is outside trying to do everything she can to get Robbie's sentence commuted uh, she wants him out of there because she's aware of what's going on inside she can feel it she has this connection uh, with certain people and things and she just has these not really visions uh, but more intuition of things that are going to happen or things that are happening that she has not seen or is not personally aware of but she knows them to be absolutely true and she knows Robbie is uh, being put through hell in this place uh, that he was sentenced to but of course nobody wants to listen to her because she's just a 16 year old black girl and uh, in, in this town in this county that counts as absolutely nothing it counts for less than nothing and even though she enlists the help of NAACP lawyers she enlists the help of her uh, white employer uh, she enlists the help of her godmother and some of her extended family she is just being bounced around from person to person idea to idea none of it is going anywhere causing her to become frustrated and and have this feeling of hopelessness about uh, her brother and ever getting him out of there you see their father is very well known in that county and he had to run away and he now lives in Chicago trying to save money to bring Robbie and Gloria to him uh, for something he was accused of that he didn't do but would have led to his death and perhaps everybody in that part of town uh, they might have suffered the consequences if he would have been caught uh, their mother died of cancer and so it's basically Gloria and Robbie uh, together and so when her efforts start getting rebuffed she can't help but just uh, be depressed about it in the meantime Robbie on the inside he also has an ability he can see haints and haints is a much better word I think than ghosts or spirits but that's basically what they are people who have died in that reformatory and there have been many 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 over the years they stick around and uh, they can be seen sometimes they appear as normal little boys to him uh, they can kind of communicate but they have their own rules they go by they can do some things you would associate with the standard ghost but they also have their own little set of rules uh, that will be explained in the book they're not exactly evil these spirits but they're not exactly benevolent they're they're kind of both at the same time and that's an aspect of the book that I found extremely fascinating was that the biggest thing to fear in this reformatory was not the ghosts and the spirits or the haints uh, but it was the humans because what goes on in here is beyond reprehensible 
And this is where a lot of that emotion I was talking about comes from. Because she has written a character in the superintendent, or uh, let's just call him what he is, a warden, that runs this place. And he is one of the most evil, despicable, sociopathic characters you will ever, ever read in a horror book. I internalize everything I read. I don't read aloud. I read to myself, and, but inside my mind's going a million miles a minute whenever I'm reading a good horror book, you know. But this one I found, my, I found myself out loud, saying out loud several times. And this is not uh, something you should do in public when you're just staring at your phone, but just cussing this character out. I, I just felt this rage and this hatred toward him. He is a truly, truly uh, horrifically despicable human being with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. You're going to have to read about why, but trust me, I was just, out loud, I was saying things like, well, you motherfucker. And, man, I would punch you right in the, I mean, I was just, I'd find myself doing that involuntarily. <laughs> like, like, my internal thoughts were just, it was so emotional, it just flowed out of me. And uh, so we have Robbie going through all this, not only with the, with the warden and his guards and other kids, but we also have the haints in there that are, I guess you could say, haunting him because he can see them, but not, any, not everybody else can see them. <clears throat> and then he's going to be asked to do something uh, that's going to change the trajectory of not only his prison sentence, uh, but also this story. Something he does not want to do. Something that makes him sick to his stomach to think about, but something that could lead to him escaping from, from this reformatory. And, and it is just brutal, and uh, it'll really... It'll really pack a punch, let me tell you. I'm really trying in this review to be more careful than normal. I want to express how I feel about this book in a way that hopefully resonates with you because she has all these elements in this book. There are also side stories going on that all manage to branch out but then uh, branch back in to the main narrative. She takes this subject of uh, uh, racism and uh, institutionalization and mixes it with this fantastic story about the haints and about family and uh, about hopelessness and hope. You'll get both of those things in here all at the same time. And uh, it's just, a, I think this book is just a testament to her skill as an author. And uh, it is one of the best horror books you're going to read all year. And I would dare say even one of the best books of any genre you'll probably read all year. And uh, with that recommendation, of course, of course, I highly, highly encourage you to click the link below, you can pick up your copy of the Reformatory on Amazon. And uh, yeah, thank me later because you are going to be blown away. And as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time and spending it here with me. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends. <laughs>